This is going to be an example of a materials ledger card. And you can note that it's going to look very similar to us tracking inventory. We're basically tracking the inventory of materials. So if you work with a merchandising company, a company that purchases and sells inventory, we'll have a similar kind of tracking system that we might use uh, for the tracking of inventory. In this case, of course, we're using it for one component of inventory, one component of, uh, of in this case, the, the type of services or the type of inventory that we make. So if we make guitars, for example, uh, the major component might be wood. And so we would have to uh, track that major component in a similar way that we would have to track the entire uh, units of inventory for a merchandising company. So we might have things like uh, on, on the inventory items. Uh, in, in this case, we're gonna say it's the wood planks. Uh, we might have a stock number. We might have a location in the storeroom if we have a large storeroom, maximum quantity, uh, minimum quantity, and quantity to reorder, a, a reorder point when we want to uh, reorder. And then we're gonna break this out then uh, to the received, issued, and balance. So this means received, like we purchased it and we have received it. So this is when we're getting the inventory. Issued would be similar to our uh, sales type of item or their cost of goods sold if we were a merchandising company. In this case, we're not selling it. It's not leaving the company. It's going to another department. It's going from our warehouse basically to the production department, to the factory, to the work in process. And then we're going to have the balance here, which is going to be what we what is kind of on the balance sheet as of the ending product so if we think of the the balance sheet this is going to be what is still included in our inventory items of just raw material and then we might be tracking this information for example on uh, march 4th we said uh, we had received uh, so we have a receiving report and this is going to be the documentation we might use in a large company to tie this out to uh the i to the receiving report so in other words this came from a receiving report the the uh, warehouse would have received this information counted it we have then the receiving report two units and then uh, we're gonna have the unit price uh, 225 and then the total price is the two units times the 225 or 450. now if we bring this over to the balance we started with one unit at 225 or 225 and now we, we're bringing over this two units. So now we've got the two units and the one unit, or of course, three units. They still all cost 225. And therefore, three times the 225 means we have a total of 675. So as of March 4th, we have $675 worth of inventory for wood planks. And then we're saying this time we have an issuance. On March 7th, we had an issuance. Why would we issue? Well, there was a request from the work in process for say there's a new guitar we need to make and they ordered a, some planks of wood one plank of wood apparently and we then have a requisition form that's going to be the form from the work in process the factory saying hey we got a we've got a, a project that we need to work on here's the the form we're going to say that's for one unit one plank cost 225 notice this isn't the sales price we're not dealing with any sales this is all internal purchasing going from one department to another now to work in process to the factory here's the total if we go to the balance then we had three units we just issued one from the warehouse so how many are left in the warehouse only two times the 225 and that gives us the 450. now a couple things to note here uh note that obviously you might think well wait if we still have three units because it only went from one department to the other and that's true but we're not going to be tracking it here in work in process now. It's not going to be included in the balance sheet account of materials. It's going to be included in the balance sheet account of work in process. We're going to apply it this one unit. Now it's going to be applied from this materials to the work in process GL account and be supported by a job cost sheet as opposed to being tracked in our just materials ledger. Also note that this system works well if these units, planks of woods don't change in value, meaning uh, if, if the planks of wood become more expensive over time just because of inflation, then we're gonna have similar issues that we have with um, inventory tracking. We're gonna have to use some type of method, actual cost of the inventory and track it, specific identification, or probably some kind of cost flow like first in, first out, the assumption that uh, we have the first in first out assumption last in first out or average so we'll have those same kind of inventory tracking problems that we have 
for the materials ledger as we would for uh, just inventory in general. And then we got, this would be the requisition form. So when we had this item here, this isn't gonna be the same form, but when we had this requisition, this is the type of form that we would use for the requisition. And remember in a big company, then we would have to have this process of, of one department requisitioning. So if I'm in the um, warehouse and I'm asking for a plank of wood, you know, I'd have to go, I'd have to go. I mean, if I'm in the work and process, the factory, and I need a plank of wood to make our, our project, then we might have to use a requisition form to get that wood from the warehouse. Now, of course, the smaller a company is then, uh, and if we're a construction company working on a job, then uh, the, the requisition forms might be similar to just the receipts, you know, that we're using in order to purchase materials that will then be supportive of, of what we're gonna be using in the, in the work in process. So the requisition form here is being used for us to take it from the warehouse that it's already been purchased but it's also gonna be the form that we're gonna use in order to apply it to a job when we create the job cost sheet. So uh, the requisite, and so when we create, the, if it was, if we were a smaller company, we might use, you know, receipts to create, of course, the job cost sheet for the materials that we would be purchasing. So we're gonna have the job number that we're gonna have on here, uh, the materials, the quantity that we need, one plank of wood, uh, quantity provided, hopefully they're the same unless 